Hey, it's Clay at ClayTrader.com. This is my top 10 stocks as we head into Friday, May 10th. This will be a technical analysis breakdown. So if you're someone that uses charts within your trading, or maybe you're just interested in learning more about charts and how they can be used as a tool to help make good decisions as a trader, this will be a video for you. And also, if you trade Bitcoin, I will do a bonus analysis at the end. First off, a bit of clarification. I'll be using the 30-minute time frame, meaning each one of these candlesticks here represents 30 minutes worth of time. So ticker symbol number one, CPOP. And we have quite the mover here. It did pull back a little bit. And this is where things get always a little fuzzy because when it gets down here, it becomes a very valid question to say, uh-oh, is this a gap and trap? Is this the beginning of the end? Is this thing just going to collapse? And we got our answer. And the price at least did start to go sideways right here, which gives us our support at about $2.77. Now, I wish I could say trading was this easy, but just because there's a pullback and just because this thing went sideways does not mean for sure guaranteed that this thing is getting ready to, you know, explode back upwards if only it were that easy my point here is that it becomes a lot more plausible at this point that yeah this could be some sort of bottom that's formed and it's you know reasonable thing that this thing could be trying to curl itself back upwards um so keep an eye on that dynamic there if there is going to be any sort of bigger movement to the upside then in my opinion at least the main trend line now to keep an eye on is going to be that level right there so keep an eye on that uh, if the price can break up through there assuming it's a high volume break then again no guarantees but reasonable to think that the price could very well go and, and do battle with those highs again but if you like these scenarios where the, we get the big move up you get a pullback things are looking kind of ugly then all of a sudden it starts to go sideways definitely keep an eye on it next one here sgd did this one yesterday and once again today good solid day so oddly enough I, i'm gonna i'm just out of curiosity i'm gonna take this tread line not manipulate it at all same slope and does it match up pretty well here it does <laughs> interesting so right here kind of a case of deja vu as you saw right there that resistance tread line which was the key breakout point going into today is once again no manipulation essentially going to be that key level right there which is given an overall pattern so i'll quickly draw in the pattern so we have our resistance we have our support we have the nice upwards move right here. So today, another bull pennant has formed. Let me change the color, make it easier to see. And I'm doing this very crudely, but you can see yesterday was a bull uh, pennant, and now another bull pennant has formed. So going into Friday, does another bull pennant form? We'll have to see what happens. But more of the story here, if you like this price range, you like bull pennants, certainly keep an eye on it. Next one, JAGX. And what started off uh, very, very rough turned into a very impressive day. Again, you look at this part of the chart right here and things were not looking good at all. Break to the downside and then the brakes were slammed on. Not only did it recover back to that area of support at 27 cents, it just kept ripping, ripping, ripping. Got up through the purple line, which was an area of resistance you can see right there. Kept going all up there. And then finally, this area of resistance that I talked about in a previous uh, video up at 32 cents did indeed act as resistance. So I just go over all that to really illustrate how powerful of a day it was, especially when you consider how bad the chart was looking at that moment in time for it to turn around like that. Very, very impressive. So as far as levels, nothing here has changed. 32 cents, still the key area of resistance. 50 period moving average, that ideal of support, meaning you know what would make the chart look the strongest moving forward. Definitely the price can stay above there. And then the next level right there at 27 cents uh, would be, uh, you know, the, the more so the important level because you don't want to see the price, you know, dropping back into this area of the chart. But all things considered, very, very impressive day and even more so impressive when you factor in how things were looking not that long ago. Next one, PLUG. And same story here when you stop and think about the fact that this thing had a gap down, was all the way down there during that opening 30 minutes and then managed to close all the way up there. Needless to say, very, very impressive day. And now the price is bumping its head right up against uh, this area of resistance right there at uh, about, yeah, $2. And we'll call it 81 cents. If you go through here, you can see right there, rejected the price. And then never hit it, but, you know, got within the general vicinity. And then you look at today, and it was definitely in, uh, you know, a much more closer vicinity. And the price couldn't quite push through there. The good news is, is that the price only needs to travel that distance before being able to do battle with it again, um, as opposed to being down here and even travel this big old distance. So that still doesn't mean that it'll be broken, but it becomes a whole lot more reasonable to think that the price could be gearing up here for a break of that 281 mark. In terms of areas of support, two main levels, the ideal level, again, that one that would make the chart look the best moving forward would be if the price can stay above that 50 period moving average. Uh, but if that level doesn't quite hold up, then the next one would be right down there at that 200 period moving average. So all in all, very, very impressive day. And we'll see if the bulls can get that break of 281.
Next one, ticker symbol M-A-R-A, and this will mean a little bit more to those of you that watched previous videos. If you have, then you know I've been talking about that resistance level right there. And a very cruel day in the sense of the price actually did break above that level. But many false breaks where every time the price broke, it was just, just like momentum disappeared and the price could never quite maintain itself, let alone build more momentum. So needless to say, that level remains the key area of resistance moving forward. Uh, but from a, you know, a, a trading standpoint, I can see people buying those breakouts and then getting chopped to pieces because, yeah, that sort of action, very, very nasty if you're trying to play a breakout. Uh, unfortunately, that's just how the market goes sometimes. Uh, but neat, from a bigger picture standpoint, uh, nothing has changed. Still, that level of resistance is that tread line right there. On the, uh, you know, on the pro side of things, the chart does continue to put in higher lows. So you have a low there. Oh, you can't see it. It's behind my ugly mug. But there's a low right there. You have a low there. You have a low there. Notice how they're getting higher and higher. And that's always a good thing. Uh, but needless to say, the main dynamic here is all about that resistance tread line right there. So maybe Friday's the day where it finally is able to break above there. But more importantly, stay above it and then build moment more momentum from there. Real quick, want to take a break and personally invite you to get signed up for this free live online webinar that I'm offering. So if you've been enjoying what you've seen and you want to learn more about this tool, how it can and should be used to build consistency and manage risk, then definitely get signed up for the free live class. If you're watching on YouTube, there's a link down in the description box you can use. Or if you're watching at my website, there's an area right there on the page you can use to sign up. Now, one special note, it is a genuine live event. So a couple of situations, maybe you already have something on your schedule this evening. Maybe you're watching this Friday morning and you totally missed it. Go ahead, send me an email, clay at claytrader.com, and I would be happy to send you a link to the replay. But if you can make it live, then definitely get signed up and I'll see you here in just a few hours. Next one, TSLA Tesla. And everything, all things considered, not a whole lot to report other than the fact of another day of consolidation. Uh, this level right here was a key area and did a great job of bouncing off it right there, but that bounce didn't get too much momentum before coming back down. And you can see where the price ultimately closed, essentially right at that level. So in my opinion, at least, that is the big question mark moving into tomorrow. Can this 172 mark hold strong or are the bears gonna pick up enough momentum that pushes it to the downside? Now, if it does go to the downside a little bit, don't get too worried because you do have the 200 period moving average at pink line, not that far below the price at all. But if the price breaks below that level also, that would be a big red flag that the bears, oh, I suppose I suppose if you're bearish and that would be a very good sign. But assuming you're bullish, that would be a, a red flag if the price also now breaks down below that pink line right there. Uh, so keep an eye on that dynamic for sure moving forward. Uh, assuming, of course, the price separates back away uh, from this 172 mark. In terms of areas of resistance, I'm going to go ahead and adjust this area right down here to that level to 175.65. And you'll also want to continue to watch uh, the purple line right there as resistance, that being the 50 period moving average. So key where they're being moving. So as time goes by, that line is going to move itself and get more and more relevant. Uh, but as of right now, because technically speaking, uh, the purple line is up above uh, the red line right there, that red line takes higher priority from a resistance standpoint. Next one here, CTMX, absolute bloodbath today, still looking very rough. In fact, the last, basically all afternoon long, just downwards channel. What makes me a little intrigued, not a little intrigued, what does make it intriguing, at least in my opinion, is volume has kicked itself into a whole nother level here, and it's still selling. So at what point is there potentially going to be some sort of capitulation? Now, these are super high risk, so if you don't have trade plans, if you don't know how to be disciplined and honor stops and all that stuff. I mean, you shouldn't be trading anyways, but you definitely shouldn't be trading scenarios like this because yeah, there's a lot of downwards pressure. And just to illustrate that, look how steep, I hope if I could use the right line, there we go. Look how steep that tread line is right there. Pretty, pretty steep tread line. But if you do like to play these that are trying to come off the bottom, so try to play some sort of curl up and through the tread line that I can see where that might fascinate you. But Again, you got to be extra disciplined for these because there's no doubt about it. A lot of selling pressure definitely showed up this afternoon. And I mean, a lot of selling pressure was already there from this morning with the gap down. Uh, but yeah, things didn't get any better. Next one here, RBLX. And same general idea. Now, there's not nearly as much of selling pressure as the one we just looked at. Uh, but the counter to that is RBLX. I'm not going to call it a super well-known stock, but I'd say a, a pretty popular stock. And when pretty popular stocks get absolutely beat down like this one did today, you got to think that a lot of people are watching it and a lot of people are watching it, wondering the same things. You know, those can create those self-fulfilling prophecies. And a level that I think a lot of people are watching is that red line right there. That took very little talent to draw that in there. And I like those levels that take very little talent because you can assume that there's that many more people watching it. So if the price were to come up here and break through there, again, no guarantees, but plausible to think that at that break right there, could that create more additional buying pressure? That is certainly a plausible scenario. In terms of areas of support, 
change that to green. If this thing does come back down, then nothing fancy there. Really just a question of where did the bleeding stop today? And that was right down there around 2960. So keep an eye on that. But I think the more fascinating dynamic is if this thing can curl upwards and then get a break up through that red line and maybe leads to a dead cat bounce or who knows, maybe a full blown reversal. Next one here, H-O-O-D. And same general idea here, very ugly looking chart. I mean, think about this, opening 30 minutes, price came all the way up here, true story, some poor souls bought right there. Hopefully they were using stop losses. So it got absolutely beat down. But what I find interesting is this thing has started to show some life. It has started to bounce. Now, 100%, this could be a dead cat bounce where it just rolls right back over. But to be fair, I mean, maybe this bounce is the start of something even bigger. And this thing keeps on moving in the upwards direction. And that's where the risk reward scenario could be really structured in your favor. So key area of support, Definitely down there right around $17. If it breaks through there, then that's violating these lows. Not good from a bullish standpoint. Uh, but if it can maintain above there, then you know maybe it comes around, chops, and starts to head back up. So again, I wish trading was easy as, oh, look, it got beat down and now it's starting to go back up. That's the start of a much bigger bounce. I mean, it certainly could be, but it, it takes a little bit more than you know just assuming that this is the start of a much bigger bounce. But it's at least rational to say that. Case in point, if the price was still dropping, 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 I'm sitting here saying, hey, it's looking like that could be a bottom. You'd be totally justified to say, well, I mean, based on what? The price is literally going straight down, but that's not the case here. So if you like to play these scenarios where you get the big beat down, you get some signs of life, and then you want to at least monitor it and see if the life continues, I would certainly keep an eye on HOOD. Next one, TQQQ. Good overall day, and I say good based on the chart. Got the break of the tread line resistance right there, which I put into play yesterday. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that as it served its purpose. So that level has been accomplished. But the next battleground that is still, you know, price is working on all about that 59.20 mark and needing to push up through there. So you're going to have to keep a close eye on 59.20 as that'll be uh, the next main battle. I, I mean, do I add in another one? Maybe I should because to me, this level. Yeah. So that level right there, if you want to get a little spicy and if you want to try to. Why is that shouldn't be that? There we go. If you want to get a little more spicy and try to maybe anticipate the break of 59.20, maybe right there, a high volume break of that resistance, a break of their high volume. Does that mean that that level or make it more plausible that 59.20 could be broken? I can totally see that. So much so that I wanted to get that line added in there. So like I said, if you want to try to anticipate a break of 59.20, I can see you using that tread line right there as a main level to watch. As far as supports, nothing new here to report. Uh, 57.88-ish was that key level. You can see temporarily dropped below there this morning, but that didn't last very long before a nice bounce upwards. So that level is still a support and still holding strong. And best case, the price continues to hold above that purple line there. But um, as I've said, if the price doesn't hold above there, not the end of the world, because you has, still have that level down there, which is a much more important level. But all things considered, good solid day today. I will get to Bitcoin here in just a second, but for you stock traders, if you like what you saw here, then again, definitely go get signed up for that free training. It'll be this evening, Thursday, May 9th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. But if you can't make it live for whatever reason, like I said, go ahead and send me an email, clay at claytrader.com, and I'd be glad to send you a link to the replay. Now let's talk some Bitcoin. One quick clarification here. I am looking at the four hour time frame. So each of these candlesticks no longer is 30 minutes, it is four hours. And I like to do this time frame because Bitcoin is open 24 seven. Uh, so this allows uh, things to remain relevant as far as this video is concerned for as long as possible. And overall, Bitcoin's hanging in there. A little bit of interesting action right now. And that's really the, what I would base the questions moving forward. What do I mean by that? Well, let's say you're watching this video 20 hours from now. Question number one you need to ask yourself is, well, what's the current status of this channel? Is this channel still working its way upwards? Has it rolled back over? And uh, an easier way to kind of just gauge the health of the channel is to ask yourself, well, where's the price at relative to that pink line 200 period moving average? If you're answering the question, you know, 15, 20 hours from now, that the price is up above that pink line, that would imply this channel here not only remained a bullish channel, but got way, way stronger. So that, I think that'd be kind of shocking if the price was above there, but it is Bitcoin, you never know. So I'd you'd use that level. Now, if you're saying, well, Clay, actually, no, the price is still down below that level. Okay, not the end of the world. Where is the price at relative to, and I'm curious about, now I'm gonna move this up here. Where is the price at relative to uh, 60,700. And as long as you're saying the price is above there, then really um, that just implies that it's still kind of just chopping around, not the end of the world. Now, if you're saying, well, actually, Clay, the price is down below 60,700. Next immediate question, where's the price at relative to 59,660? If you're answering the question that the price is down below there, then that becomes a much more uh, bigger of a red flag for me in terms of Bitcoin. Because think about that. That would imply that this bounce here has failed to have the price go down here and failed enough for it to go down there and failed even more to break down through there. 
So again, I don't, I don't think you'd be answering it that way, but if you are, that would tell you that the bears have all of a sudden woken up. And as I invited the stock traders, I'm inviting you as a Bitcoin and crypto trader because what you learn about in this class can and definitely should be used within the world of crypto and Bitcoin. So like I said, it'll be this evening, Thursday, May 9th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. But if you can't make it live, clay at claydraw.com. I'd be happy to send you a link to the replay. But yeah, show up live. We have questions and answers. Um, so it'll be a good time. I'm, I'm excited for it. And also, as far as the top 10 videos are concerned, if you enjoy these, hit that like button, leave a comment below. If you have a request for something, leave that down in the comment section. I'll do my best to potentially do that uh, in, uh, in videos uh, to come. So thanks for watching. Go get signed up for that free training, and hopefully I'll be seeing you soon.